While protests happened in Cuba, we also saw the Cuban-American community here take to the streets, particularly in the city of Miami, which for years has been the home and safe haven for the Cuban refugee community. And joining us now is the mayor of Miami and a Cuban-American himself, Francis Suarez. Mayor, thanks so much for being here and joining us tonight. Let's, uh, let's start on a personal level. You're the son of Cuban refugees. What was it like for you when you, you saw those images out of Cuba and saw demonstrations happening in the streets? Well, it was inspiring, first of all, because the courage that it takes uh, for the Cuban people uh, to come out in mass, the last count, uh, almost uh, two dozen cities, um, it, it's essentially they're all risking their life. So you, you feel a sense of bond, a sense of emotion um, with those people who are, are putting their life in jeopardy, because what we know that the government is going to do is precisely what the government is doing. Uh, they are cutting out communication and they are uh, systematically, uh, you know, beating and repressing any dissident uh, voices. And so uh, as Cubans uh, here in Miami, uh, and particularly the new arrival Cubans that we saw, many of which were in front of Versailles yesterday, thousands of them, um, what, what they are seeing is their family members uh, being beaten, uh, an inability for them to communicate. And, and it's, it's a very, very difficult situation for them, very emotional, very, very passionate. I can imagine. And we've certainly seen more Cubans coming via rafts and even via the U.S.-Mexico border. If there is a scenario where we start seeing something like the Mariel boat lift back in the 80s, is your city prepared to handle yet another Cuban mass exodus? Of course we are. We're an incredibly compassionate city. We're a city uh, that has had a wave of immigrants. In fact, the large percentage of the people that live in the city of Miami were not born in the city. In fact, I'm the first mayor of Miami in 125 years. We're going to celebrate our 125 year history. I was actually born in the city of Miami. So we have a history of, 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 of bringing in people from the outside and embracing them. Um, you know, but it's it's just a tragic situation where uh, you know people would have to flee the country of origin to find peace and prosperity for themselves and their families. Have you reached out to or heard from anyone in the Biden administration? I have. I reached out to the Biden administration and the State Department. Um, you know, the, the White House did send me the statement um, prior to when it was issued, um, which I thought was 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 a good statement. Um, you know, we also uh, heard from the State Department as well and officials in the State Department that issued similar statements. I mean, I think the question is, and it's always a question in, in cases like this, is, is, is what does the United States do? Um, you know, certainly there's a need for humanitarian aid. Certainly there's a need uh, for uh, medical assistance. Uh, assistance. Um, but the question is, at what point uh, is that going to be allowed in the country? And and and, and at what point uh, we want to make sure that the Cuban people, that, that their voice is being heard and that, that there isn't anything that the Castro regime can use uh, to, to make the claim, as they often do, that the United States and their imperialistic uh, ambitions are what is trying to disrupt the Cuban people. And based on that, I kind of want to put that question back to you. Do you think that the U.S. should be getting involved in Cuba? Well, I think that, that, you know, without a doubt, there's going to be some level, and I, and I know I, I don't like to use the word intervention, but there's going to be some level of intervention because, um, you know, the, the Cuban people are, are are connected to, you know, the United States. And so we've we've been intervening in the sense of remittances from family members to family members uh, for decades uh, in, in Cuba. We have been propping up in many ways uh, their economy. And so, uh, you know, it, 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 and from a moral perspective, I think the United States has an obligation uh, to help the Cuban people who are, are starving. But the question is, you know, you know, how are, is, are the Cuban people going to be able to effectuate change in their country, dealing with an, a highly repressive regime that is well armed, uh, at least vis-a-vis -vis its citizenry, and is, is not going to allow them uh, uh, to, you know, to, to peacefully even demonstrate? And as you well know, the Cuban leader blames the U.S. embargo for a lot of the chaos that's happening in the country right now. Do you think that the embargo should be lifted again? Look, that's that's the standard line uh, from the Cuban leader uh, is to blame the United States, whether it's the embargo, whether it's, uh, you know, sanctions, whatever it is. Um, that's that's the standard line. And I think, you know, the, the, the Cuban government has the ability to trade with every single other country in the world. So the United States is one country. And I think I think it's 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 a, a false narrative. And of course, they control the, the media. That's a false narrative, which ultimately is not convincing the Cuban people. I think the uprising that we saw is obviously the Cuban people are no longer being fooled. They no longer want to be fooled, and they no longer will be fooled, and they're willing to risk their life for freedom and liberty.
Uh, aside from the Cuban community, Miami also has a strong Haitian community. Of course, in the past week, we've seen chaos in both Caribbean nations. What's your message to both of these communities, and, and what kind of support are you able to provide? A message to, to those two communities that they're both great parts of the Miami community. I mean, they both uh, contributed greatly to what Miami is and what Miami will be. Uh, we support them in their moments of crisis, uh, like we're seeing now, and we're willing to do whatever we can to effectuate the kind of change in their countries that'll help them have a peaceful and prosperous future. Mayor Suarez, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.